Hey everybody, how's it going? So last year I got myself an LG G8 phone. I did not buy it new. There's no way in hell I'm spending over a few hundred dollars on a phone. I, this had a really large gash in the back of it, which I don't care about. I put a case on it. But because of that really large gash and a minor little chip thing in the corner, I got it for around 300 bucks, which is a great way to buy a you know, top-of-the-line phone or top-of-the-line device very cheaply. Buy it used or with minor cosmetic imperfections that, let's face it, a month after you own the phone, you're not going to care about or notice anyway. So um, I like this phone because it had 24-bit lossless audio recording with video. It had the dual camera thingy. It had a ridiculously good motion stabilization thingy. So if I'm recording a video, not live streaming, but recording on my bike, this thing actually does get better video than a GoPro and it doesn't crash, which GoPros can't resist doing every five minutes. So it was a really nice phone. And the thing is I eventually, with a little shotgun microphone, wound up messing up and destroying the headphone port. I have this little Rode shotgun mic that I use for videos and I, there's a little clamp that comes with it to clamp it on the phone. I probably used too much force at one point and I, I messed up th that jack. So I opened it up and because I'm I'm an idiot that doesn't really fix phones anymore. I have staff for that. I destroyed my, my fingerprint sensor. So I figured I would try to, you know, fix my fingerprint sensor so I can have that back because it's really annoying having to log in everything by typing in a password. So I looked online and I cannot find this anywhere. Nobody actually sells this fingerprint scanner. If you go to any one of these, you, know, you can't find it on Amazon. You can't find it on any website. This is a, a fingerprint scanner for a G5, which does not fit this. Uh, there, th this, this pretty much does not actually exist. So I figured, okay, fine, screw it. You know what? I'll go to whatever LG's Genius Bar is. I give up. You win. I will have you charge me out the ass to fix the device that I could clearly fix myself if I had a part. But so, you know, I fill in my repair request, I send them my proof of purchase, all this other crap. And then when you click here to print shipping instructions, because here's where the instructions are going to be as to how you send everything in, you get <laughs> this shit. I tried it in different browsers. I tried it at different times. I start, tried resubmitting it. Uh, virtually no effort was put into the this website. You have to really dig to even find the part in LG site where you're able to get any support of any kind on a phone. And this is really just to point out that when people say, you know, if you don't like, why are you advocating for right to repair in general? You know, just tell people not to buy Apple. I focus on Apple because they are essentially the trifecta where they are some of the most expensive products. They are perceived as having the best customer service and they are not durable and each year typically has a terrible design defect that does not exist in every other brand. For almost every year for the past 12 years, I can give you a design defect that exists in an Apple product that did not exist in almost every other popular brand but that existed with theirs. They're ridiculously expensive and for some reason there's this idea that unlike that garbage service that you get when you buy a Dell or a Lenovo or an Acer or an LG or a Samsung, when you go to Apple it's all perfect. So, and also I work on those products mostly exclusively. So I have, it's really easy for me to cite specific issues as to where they are bad at repair. And I think where it's more egregious because they, you know, they were one of the last ones to get put liquid resistance into their phones. Their laptops still have no liquid resistance. You can't even can't open the hinge on most of them without the, on the new models, without them just dying. It's, it's, it's awful. But, but to be clear, this is an issue that affects the entire industry, and it is an issue with other companies. I focus on Apple because I think they're one of the most egregious offenders, and also because I have an Apple repair shop, I can give you really specific knowledge about what makes it egregious that I would not be able to do for other manufacturers. However, that does not mean that this is not an issue across the board. Like, this is, I, I, I can't even pay you to fix my phone. I can't buy the part that I need myself, doesn't exist, and if I want to pay you whatever the hell that you want to hold me at gunpoint for to fix it, because I can't buy the part anywhere, I, I, I can't even do that. I mean, I, am I stupid for buying an LG phone? Yes, I, I'm pretty stupid for it. I wanted that little feature because a lot of the times I do audio processing after the fact. So I'll do like, you know, there are these there are wind reduction plugins. I'll do you know, or there, there's like background noise removal. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do. And it's better to work with a wave file, particularly a 24 bit one, than it is to work with a 128 kilobit lossily compressed 
AAC file. So I like the fact that this phone just had that basic functionality built in. I didn't because you know there are these third-party camera apps available. A lot of them that I've used have really sucked. Like ninety percent of the ones that I remember using two years ago could not allow me to switch between the the wide angle and the normal lens in the back of the phone. Or you could switch, but you could only use it for taking pictures, not recording. It was really annoying. So I figured, fuck it, I'll get something that has that built in. It has good audio. The optical image. I mean, the stabilization on this is just absolutely amazing. But this kind of stuff is just stupid. Like, I realize when I'm buying this product, I'm buying something that is disposable. And this is really the kind of thing that Right to Repair is seeking to address. It's it's really not just an issue with Apple. Apple is one of the most egregious offenders. And also, as one of the largest companies, they're the company that every other company is looking to as a, you know, a Me Too company, as a, how can we gain, you know, gain traction? How can we gain profitability? How can we gain market share? And they often wind up copying the silly crap that Apple does. Apple glues something and next year everybody else glues something. And Apple removes this and next year everybody else removes this. And so when they do something, it really does tend to trickle down to all the other companies. And honestly... I'll I'll give Apple this. If you know, I go to Apple's website. At the very least, there is an option to be bent over and sodomized by Apple that is easily browsable on their website. They may swap out the entire phone. They may not try to actually fix anything inside the phone. They may just do a swap out. F you, F your data. We're giving you a new one. But at least it's an option. When it comes to LG, like it's it's not even an option, which is just. Sad. To have a site that is completely non-functional in this way is honestly not even something that would be acceptable for a tiny business of my size. But for a business of LG's size, this really does showcase that repair is a complete and utter afterthought. It's so like, what, they actually want to make that thing work again if it's not? Oh, well, who cares? Because if you go through their website, you know, it's not like the rest of this website doesn't work. If I go to, if I, you know, if I want to go to LG.com, you know, there, there's more than enough stuff on here trying to sell me stuff. They're more than capable of selling me just about anything that I want to buy within a couple of clicks. And all of this stuff works. You know, I could click over here to see the 77-inch LG TV, where to buy. You know, it'll take me to a place to buy their stuff just about immediately. And all those links are going to work when I click them. Ahem. Well, you get the idea here. But the link to actually make something work again, that's where the 500 error is going to be. If I had an issue like this on my site, I would be paying a developer to fix it immediately because I need that part of the business. The reality here is that they don't need that part of the business. None of these companies really even want this part of the business to exist because you're not going to go over here and click this button if you're able to actually make stuff work again. This is something that is true in many industries with many manufacturers, whether we're discussing cameras, tractors, cell phones, laptops, all sorts of devices across all sorts of industries are having the exact same problem that I discuss when I bring up Apple products. I am focusing on the small section of the world that I am very well informed on when it comes to technology so that when I say this is bad, this is why it's bad, this is how it used to be better, this is what they're doing, this is why I believe this is something that's being done on purpose rather than just the whoopsie that I'm not talking out of my ass. But I don't want to give you guys the impression that this is an issue that just it's just Apple. And if you want to avoid it, well, yeah, you, you can just buy some one down the road. Because down the road, you're going to find that virtually every manufacturer that exists nowadays, sadly, has some, at the very least in the popular end with consumer electronics, has some sort of policy like this where you can clearly tell that they really don't want you actually working on their products to be repaired or reused again. It's, you know, it it may be a lighter version of what Apple does, but it's pretty much the same message. Just throw it away and buy a new one. You don't really want to fix that, do you? Buy a new one. 